Hi, my name's Chris, and this is going to be a 2021 shop tour of my single car garage bay workshop. If you want to see that, stick around. Okay, so my shop is designed around the need to move every two to three years for my work. Um, I'm in the Army and I have to move around just by nature of what I do. My shop is designed around three primary fixtures that I've built um, for the purposes of shop and then I have some other toolbox type carts too that I've expanded into over the years. But the first is my um, central island assembly table and I guess all-in-one workbench. The second piece of equipment is my mobile lumber and sheet goods storage cart. And the third is my mobile tool wall and drawer cabinet. Okay, so you're going to get a little bit of a, a glimpse of my philosophy for a, a small workshop. One of the primary things that I like to have is everything set up and ready to go. You see I have integral dust collection even though I'm using a shop vac for that purpose. Everything's plugged in ready to go, as close to being set up and ready to go as possible. Now, that does force me to take up this whole garage bay with things because I can't just push them along the wall because my entire work cart, outer to outer dimensions are about 48 inches wide and 11 feet long. Now, there is some workspace on either end around that and on the sides. So you can see that that cart takes up quite a bit of space. So what I'm actually gonna do now is kind of expand everything out into like the ideal working setup where I have things not quite uh, in the storage configuration where I can park in here. And I'll give you a tour. We'll kind of deep dive each one of these uh, areas and hopefully you'll glean a tip or two for your workspace. So as we go through, I'm just gonna give you kind of a factual overview of my entire workshop. If you want to hear some of the design philosophy for why I chose to lay things out the way I did, I've got a video that I'm gonna be publishing later exactly about how I came to the design conclusions I did and why I traded off the things I did. So I encourage you to make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that future video. I'll also talk about all the things I would change if I were doing this uh, over in, an, in another video that I have coming. So I really encourage you to hang out, subscribe, and uh, check out these videos when they're released. Okay, so I wanna show you where power comes into my primary workbench. I actually am running all power off of one 20 amp circuit. I've got a heavy duty extension cord that's about 15 feet long and then I have a second heavy duty extension cord that sometimes I will tie into when I'm working outdoors. Everything comes into the bench here. It's 10 gauge wiring. You can see it goes into uh, one junction box and then I've got another junction box immediately after it. That comes out in 12 gauge wiring to one of these receptacles here. On the opposite side of the bench, there's another receptacle. And then you can see I go into a heavy duty uh, 20 amp rated extension cord that joins the second half of the bench. And then two other junction boxes there with receptacles. And um, so there is a total of 20 receptacles in this bench that are all uh, 20 amp rated. I have eight receptacles centrally located here. I've got a receptacle bank. I've got two receptacles here and then two on the other half. This cart actually splits into two halves for moving. Okay, I've got uh, eight more receptacles centrally located under here that allows me to pull power for everything. Um, this overhead dust and electrical arm really makes routing and sanding and any of those overhead suction operations a dream that have long cords and hoses and things. Okay, so I have a, a shop vac here. This is a 320 air watt uh, shop vac um, pulling suction throughout. I've got a 25 gallon dust bin here that I've built with a sep cyclone separator. And then there is a central run of two inch pipe um, underneath it. I already kind of showed you the dust collection piping here, but we got uh, this 25 gallon bin. If I were to redo this again, I would design it to fit um, standard bags. I did not do that. Uh, I am going to rework those plans and that design for that eventually. has a cyclone separator, 
central will run a two inch pipe here that goes out to all the different machines. And then I've got my kind of DIY blast gates that I've got everything tied into. Okay, so the first fixture in my shop I wanna show you is my jointer mount. It's on a drawer so the jointer can go and stow underneath the bench. We've got this little bit of a, of a rigged up leg here to give it some additional uh, vertical support. Now I have a bench top joiner, which is not the most precise tool, although joiner is typically a pretty precise tool. So uh, this is really just used for rough dimensioning in my opinion. Um, but typically a table saw and a joiner are used in tandem. And you can see that these are completely able to be used simultaneous with this setup. Um, underneath, I keep my bench top router table um, that I pull out and either set up on the ground or clamp to the top when I'm using it. But everything's got dust collection. That just plugs right in. And allows me to store everything. Okay, so here you can see my table saw workstation. I chose a Bosch 4100 series um, table saw that I bought in 2012 for uh, my setup. Uh, I actually like the table saw for as small as it is. Um, I try to keep all my accessories and blades, feather boards, et cetera, close to the, the saw or as close to where I'm gonna work with it as possible. You can see I've got out feed uh, for the saw and I can cross cut a full sheet of plywood through here as well as rip um, most sections out of a sheet of plywood that I need to through the saw with full out feed support. Uh, quick note, I have my track saw track hung on the garage door to save some space. This is a 110 inch or 2.8 meter long track. Um, I think this is a great spot to capitalize on some of that storage. And then these little clamps that I made um, really work well to fixture it in there. This is my foldable planer stand. This is one of my most popular sets of plans, but it allows me to stow my planer when I'm not using it. And it lets me get it up to a nice working height whenever it's time to do some milling to save my back a little bit. Of course, the outfeed table, assembly table works well for um, passing material through and just keeping it sorted as I'm going through the milling process. And then as you typically only mill or dimension near the beginning of a project, it also easily stows back out of the way whenever I'm not using it. And of course, dust collection ties in. Now the output of the DW735 planer does pretty much match the performance of my shop back. So there's certain things I do with my dust collection to make sure that I don't have chips uh, backflow into my pipes um, to the other machines. Okay, moving a little further along the bench. See, I have a, a DeWalt miter saw. One of the videos that's really popular for me is my dust collection here. Um, rather than have a big bulky shroud, I've uh, just improved it for a shop vac dust collection with some rubber drawer liner. I encourage you to go check that out. Um, it works really, really well. I don't actually get a ton of dust um, into the air around the saw. This pretty much takes care of everything. But it's a very simple concept, whether you watch the video or not. It's just getting that dust collection airstream closer to the offshoot of the blade. You can see I have a full four inch deep by eight foot long uh, support for anything I need to cut through the miter saw. I have a standard pony bench vise here. I just added a, a nice wide jaws to it so that I can um, cut uh, joints in the end of, of long table legs and other things that I might make. Um, but this is about the best place I could figure to put a vise on this bench. And then of course the other electrical outlet which we talked about earlier. I keep my bench top sander and my scroll saw down below here, along with all the blades for my scroll saw. These are two machines that I'll just bring up on the bench top, put on some uh, carpet pad when it's time to use them or clamp them to the table, and I use it up top. I would like to build some fixtures for these in the future that may be either, either for the sander that attaches to a cleat on the side of the bench. We'll, we'll just see what the solutions are. I've, been using it that way now for quite a few years. Okay, here we are on the end of the bench opposite the table saw. Of course, you got my drill press. I have my drill press mounted here. Um, you got bits and things stored in a drawer underneath. Uh, chip brush, battery charger for cordless uh, tools here. And then I've got my uh, Rikon 103061 bandsaw. I really love this little bandsaw. This was a huge upgrade to uh, my machines in my shop. This thing allows me to do all kinds of things that I just couldn't do um, 
with this quality of a, of a cut. It's got a half horsepower motor, so it's a, it's a very strong machine for its size. And uh, I've been just thrilled since I added this thing to the shop. It's been a game changer for a lot of the things I do. And then uh, my bandsaw is on a, uh, a cleat mount here that allows me to do wider things on the drill press or for those really odd circumstances where I'm running something huge through the table saw and I just need to get it out of the way. So that wraps up the main cart. If you have questions, I'd love to answer them. I try to get to as many comments as I can. Um, just throw that down below. Or if you've got some feedback you see on the design, I'd love to hear that too. I'm, I'm always uh, loving to learn and improve my setup. So now I'm gonna move on to the tool wall and some other storage things. We'll go through them pretty quickly. Uh, I'll just give you some pans over the things um, so you can see how I've got things stored and, and uh, just take a peek inside of some of those things. Okay, we're gonna go down the wall side of my shop now and just take a look at everything. This is, of course, Craftsman Toolbox I've had for a long time. I keep all my, uh, most of my household tools, stud finder, electrical stuff, um, sockets, screwdrivers, all of my uh, pliers, just kind of go-to tools, mechanics tools in here, files, things like that. Anything I might need. This is kind of my safety glasses storage area where my kiddos can reach them whenever they need them. This is the mobile tool wall I built in 2017. Um, lots of functionality with this one. It's been through two moves with us. Uh, one from Georgia to Alabama, one from Alabama to Tennessee. During the move from Alabama to Tennessee, I basically just uh, saran wrapped this whole thing. I, I took some of the heavier tools out, like the hammers and things, but I, I kept a lot of things in place and just kind of moved it as is. It is eight feet long. It's on um, six, I want to say those are four inch casters. The main workbench is on five inch casters. There's a couple times I've been asked, and I mistakenly said four inch casters. And just a note, every time I buy casters, I buy them at Harbor Freight Tools. So these are just the hard rubber casters that they sell that are probably some of the cheaper casters you can get. And these ones now are going on how many years I've had this workbench. There you go, now you can see them. Those ones are holding up well. And these ones now are uh, several years old and they're holding up pretty well. But uh, this cabinet's a mess. I'll just give you a peek inside of it. Sandpaper, little uh, milling jig for the drill press, my plumbing toolbox. Um, sharpening stuff. Sandpaper drawer, kind of a cluttered drawer. I really want to organize my sandpaper in a different way. Um, this is kind of hardware. Some tap and dies. More hardware junk. Oh, a note. So this is the one drawer I've added a drawer glide to. All of these other ones are on wooden runners. And you can see they're sloppy. In order to save money when I built this thing, I didn't install drawer glides, but I gave I left space for them on either side. That was a mistake. I should have just added the drawer glides when I built this thing. Well, that's something I've corrected in the plans. But I get it, there's 12 drawers here. That's an expensive set of drawer glides. Get them at a big cabinet store, not a box store where you're gonna pay 20 bucks a piece for them. Get them at a cabinet store or get them online for a couple bucks a piece and install them whenever you make your cabinets. Don't try to save money and not make them. Unless you can, I mean, maybe we've got good techniques for drawers, but I, it's just harder on the pools. It's harder on the drawer facings. It's harder on the pools, it's harder on the whole drawer itself. And it makes getting in and out of drawers just annoying. So not something I recommend. The mobile tool wall just allows me to keep everything kind of out where I can see it and at the ready. Um, I find that at least for myself, I, will, I am more likely to use the right tool for the job or the right layout instrument if I can see it and go grab it quickly. So that's kind of why I have everything the way I do. Everything's kind of ready to go in an orientation where you can go grab it. Um, that's kind of how I like to keep things. Of course, a whiteboard for planning, whatever it's, you know, it's a hardware shopping list to settings for the CNC to, um, you know, just roughing out an idea before I sketch it on paper. 
or sketch it on paper and then go draw it in a drafting program. That's kind of how I operate. The whiteboard is essential. Some router bits, drill bits, Forstner bits. This is my little 3018 CNC. I've been using this guy for, oh man, several years now. Really liking it. I've got a little five and a half watt laser in here and I've been primarily doing things with. Um, this is just both a, a stand for it and housing for for uh, random junk, apparently. You know, zip ties, rubber bands, anything that doesn't have a place. Uh, bandsaw blade storage there. I'm trying to find something here. These are tools for a toolbox I'm gonna make for our youngest. Um, I'll show you some other toolboxes like what I'm gonna make in just a minute. Air compressor cart. This thing's been around with me for a while, since probably 2012. Added this in probably 2015. This uh, mobile garage shelf, I actually just reclaimed for the shop in preparation for my leaving. Um, it's a lot of storage here. There's uh, 32 square feet of shelf storage here. This is just made with one sheet of plywood and some two by fours. Um, but I just have all my hoses and and uh, shop vac attachments in one spot and you can see that like all flat surfaces it started to collect junk already this is what i'm going to make or very similar to what i'm going to make for our youngest son my dad made these two toolboxes for my two kids he has made eight of these for each of his grandkids and so i'm going to continue that tradition at least for my kids and I'm gonna make one for our youngest. There's a Bora workbench. I've really been getting a lot of use out of that since I bought it this past winter. Um, Makita track saw, I picked that up this past winter. That's been a game changer in the shop. Just some other accessories and routers and stuff. Um, router and sanding mats, my old, some tile tools, some home improvement stuff that I don't use unless I'm doing a big job. Got a lot of finishes, glues, tapes, paints here. Additional hardware storage, if you know what I'm saying. Keeping it uh, secured right. Um, this is mostly for uh, hardware and other storage. Keep a lot of small parts, everything from gears to you know different bits. Basically, I save all hardware. Uh, a couple boxes of scraps. Everything kind of gets its use eventually. Paints, more uh, household storage. There's my welder. Okay, let's talk real briefly about lighting. As you can see, I've got two ratchet straps here holding everything up. This is a parachute cord that's tensioned either end of the shop. And then I've got um, four Sunco LED fixtures hung from each. And then I have two additional here kind of in the center bay so that I have good even lighting all over everything in all the work areas here. You can see kind of the difference between the garage side and the shop side and just how much brighter and nicer to work in it is in here. Now I have a video on this lighting setup. Um, I keep it modular because of moving. Um, if I were to reinstall these fixtures or replace them, it would start to get expensive every time I moved. And I can have these lights put up in uh, really about an an hour or less um, that includes you know getting the ladder out locating all the studs putting in these anchor points here with uh, eye screws and then uh, getting that line reestablished into the right length and then all those lights are basically just held up there by their stock chains with uh, zip ties so everything goes up pretty quickly for lighting and uh, that's a pretty cool setup it works for me I have fortunate enough to have high ceilings in this space so everything's kind of out of the way, well above my work surfaces. But uh, something to consider if you need uh, to have modular lighting. Moving on over here. So I have moved my mobile lumber cart kind of out away from everything. But a lot of times when I'm working, this thing will come out into the other garage bay. But uh, I've got a clamp rack integral with it. And I've just got, got some scraps stored on here. Keep sheet goods on this side. This is my tabletop for my Bora. Some other sheet goods. I keep some table saw jigs up here. Um, I made these garage shelves not too long ago. That's gonna turn into a video for you. These were super quick to put up, super effective on getting a bunch of stuff 
off the ground. Um, you know, they're into kind of the, the cart here. Some more jigs, some more clamps. Anyhow, that's going to about do it. By watching this video, you're helping me do what I love, and I'm hoping to help you maximize your shot. Thanks for watching.